the first item of business is roll call. Okay. So Sarah. Sarah Bowerly Garrison. Randy Cassidy, present. Uh, D. Del Rosa, City of Newington, present. Deborah, can you hear us? Yeah, I was about to okay. be part of the role, so Deborah Myers is present. All right, Cindy Canarney here, staff present. John Zobie at the hand department. Christina Finley, hand department. Colleen Newbill, legal. All right, next item of business is reading of the minutes for September 5th, 2023. Do any commissioners have any comments or questions? If not, I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion for approval as, minute, as, minute, uh, as noted. Um, and Sarah Bowerly Danson, I'll second. All right, uh, all in favor, I need a vote via roll call, please. Randy Cassidy, aye. Sarah Bowerly Danson, yes. That took away. We lost Deborah. Oh. All right, Cindy Canarney, yes. Uh, next item of business is the examination of claims for September 15, 2023 for 188565 Any commissioners have any comments or questions? If not, I'll entertain a motion. Um, Sarah Bowerly Danson, I motion to approve the claims for September 15, um, 2023. Randy Cassidy, second. We have a first and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. No one opposed. Next item on the agenda is examination of payroll registers for September 8th, 2023 for $37,491.56. Do any commissioners have any comments or questions? If not, I'll entertain a motion. Randy Cassidy, I'll make a motion to accept this uh, presented. And Sarah Bowery Danson, I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? No. All right, next item of business is reports of officers and committees. Is there a director's report? Uh, there is President Canarney, um, John Zobie with the hand department. Just want to remind the public that the Redevelopment Commission um, had a work session last Tuesday, and we have another one scheduled for tomorrow at 4 o'clock here at City Hall. Um, also want to report that the RDC met in executive session uh, just here at the last hour at 4 o'clock so, um, to discuss real estate matters. Uh, so. I want to make sure we make that report as well. Um, and our community development block grant applications for the 2024 program year are going to be due October 30th, so we'll get more information out. But we are advancing the calendar up uh, by quite a bit this year to reflect some changes in the environmental review process. So uh, we'll look forward to sharing more information with everyone uh, then. Uh, and that, uh, I believe, concludes my report. All right, thank you. Is there a legal report? No report from legal. I'm happy to answer any questions, though. All right, thank you. Is there a treasurer's report? I don't believe Controller Underwood is on. He's out. So. All right, uh, business development updates. Uh, yeah, uh, Dee Del Rosa sitting in for Holly Warren, uh, ESD. Um, Holly sent me with this message. Uh, the bid process for the Tech Center construction is moving along. Great turnout at the pre-bid meeting last Wednesday. Thank you to Colleen for all of the work she put into arranging it and answering contractors' questions. And thanks to everyone who continued to work to help us meet our tight, tight goals for the project. And looking forward to diving into more trade development details at Tuesday's work session. Um, also, uh, the CPT recertification process is rolling along very well. <laughs> um, gotten a lot of information over to IU at this point in time, and uh, I guess the, the writing process is, is starting this week. So. That's all I have. All right, thank you. Um, Hopewell update. Uh, sure. Sure. Oh, there you go. Can you see us there? Yeah, right here. Yeah, if I can get closer to the mic. Okay. Thank you. So, from a Hopewell perspective, um, there's been a focus on responding to the IU Health site conditions notice letter that has been um, provided to us by IU Health, which um, our deadline to respond is September 25th. Um, so our due diligence, I think I've talked about this before, but just to restate, our due diligence has involved geotech and site survey work, um, so a building an analysis on the garage, and associated with that a physical site tour, phase two environmental, and then an associated with the core building, the developer has provided, um, is providing structural analysis and a tour today happened with the IHCBA. Um, we are expected to receive the as-built and the available test report today, hopefully, I haven't seen them yet, but hopefully they show up in my inbox yet today. Um, so we look to be um, responding to that, 
to say, is there anything after we independently verify that we do not believe they are ready to go with? So um, one of them in the site walkthrough we already identified, and that is um, we are concerned about the invasive, particularly about the invasive species that are out there and the, and the lack of actual grass. It looks very green from a distance, but um, so we did find out today verbally that they are receding. So if you see contractors out um, actually receding, um, that is part of their process. So we've already given them a heads up about one of the items that we had concerns about. So they have done that. They also identified some areas where some erosion control wasn't quite right. I know Randy, you had identified at one of our last meetings or maybe a uh, concern. And so they have been addressing several of those erosion control areas that we've identified as well. So that is a big activity that's going on. Um, the, uh, we've talked in the past about uh, the evaluation team that has been reviewing the submissions from blocks eight, nine, and 10. And so soon we will be asking the RDC to approve uh, the uh, release of a public offering um, because the evaluation team um, looks like there's maybe some potentially viable proposals and we wanna take that next step in the process. So. Um, we are looking at that very likely coming to you the first meeting in October. So just as a heads up about that. And again, that's for blocks eight, nine, and 10. And then for block for the uh, next RFI, the next RFI we're looking at is for one, two, and three. And because the CBCI is really being charged with kind of making the development happen and, and finding out whether there's enough development, we're gonna ask the CBCA on Wednesday to approve that release of that RFI for blocks one, two, and three. The earliest it'll release is on September 25th, so just as an awareness of that. Um, uh, another activity, Hopewell West, the alley vacation uh, request is in to the council, and that's, I think the second hearing is uh, October, the first meeting in October, so that's coming up. Um, and, um, and then last but not least, one of the items on the agenda today is about a federal grant opportunity that we've been working on with your grant writing team. And uh, it looks like uh, there is great alignment and uh, what they are looking for. The uh, Department of Transportation Reconnecting Communities and Neighborhoods Program is looking at finding and funding projects that have reconnection and transportation, um, environment, resiliency, and sustainability, as well as affordability and access to jobs. So uh, I don't know about you, but I think Hopewell fits all of those. Um, and so um, we hope with your approval to be submitting um, that grant and try to continue to find other ways to fund infrastructure and other needs in Hopewell. Those are the key points. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any questions from commissioners? One quick question, it goes to CBCI for now. Yeah. Yes, it always comes back to RDC, yeah. And one verified process. Yeah, so this process wise, um, um, and we can bring that we can bring that back in um, in an RDC meeting. I think we've kind of, uh, we talked about it at the work session uh, in terms of what that process would be, but if it's a, well, first of all, public offering, you own the land. You, as the RDC who owns the land, you have to issue the public offering. That is not a choice, that is mandate. But from an RFI, you know, figuring out what the development is, what is the market really like, um, I think we, and when those initial RFI responses come back, you heard us talk about, um, you know, the evaluation team that was really led from you three and myself, but also had a lot of staff and things like that. You know, when we, if you take it back to the core building, when we did the core building public offering, you issued the public offering, you received it, and then you handed it over to be evaluated. I think we're looking at the RF. I, the request for information stage of this to say, okay, CDCI, why don't you go out and find development, see if it's even gonna be possible, get it in, review it primarily with you three as the driver on that with other key staff giving input, and then ultimately the CDCI would make the recommendation to the RDC about whether they see viable proposals that you could move forward with the public offering. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. Okay. Just looking for the step, maybe yep. the step. Yep, for the process. We'll add that into the next um, agenda where we're bringing back other Hopewell things just so that we can um, see that again. But yeah, I think that's that, that essentially what that graphic showed in the work session. All right, thank you. Um, let's move on to new business. Uh, first item is resolution 23-70. Approval of the Department of Transportation's Limited Access and Equity Program of the Reconnecting Communities and Neighborhoods Program grant for Hopewell. Who'd like to speak regarding this? I think we've got 
So staff of presidents, so Jonas Chang is new to the city, the controller's office, uh, director of grant initiatives, I think. Uh, yeah. And so Jonas is kind of spearheading the uh, city's application for this grant. I'd like to let him give us an update about the grant, and then we can talk to him with the resolution it's, it's asking the RDC to do, if that's okay. Perfect. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, as Deb mentioned previously, the uh, grant is focused on um, redevelopment of infrastructure to increase um, connections um, and transportation, uh, increase access for pedestrians, cyclists, as well as, um, I guess, car drivers to affordable housing and job opportunities, and uh, increasing the um, so, uh, environmental resilience of um, different areas um, that are being redeveloped, in this case, the old hospital site. Uh, this particular grant is uh, due, uh, proposals are due on September 28th, so that's next Thursday, Ooh. so it's coming up very soon. And this particular uh, funding opportunity has the potential to um, cover 50% of um, the expected expenditures for a particular project. Um, the remaining 50% uh, needs to have either a local match or potentially have uh, up to 30% uh, additional other federal funding sources. So that might be highway funds, that might be other federal grants or state pass-throughs to um, cover the expenses of re redeveloping a site. Uh, currently, uh, the budget for this uh, particular project um, from 2024 to 2026, which is the range um, that the project timelines uh, would allow for this particular grant. We're looking at uh, about 38 million. Uh, for 38? Yes. Okay. Uh, for the Hope Well uh, Redevelopment. So we would be asking the uh, U.S. Department of Transportation for about uh, $19 million, so 50% of that match. Um, awards for this particular uh, grant. Last year, they were awarded in February, or I guess February 2023 was the last round. So we would expect uh, award notifications to be February or March of this coming year. Um, and then the project, um, I guess, itself would, uh, the funds would be dispersed or begin to be dispersed probably four to six months after that. Um, this particular grant is paid out through re, uh, reimbursements, so we would need to have the funds on hand. Um, I, I believe it's quarterly to be able to um, pay for the project and then apply for reimbursement for applicable um, expenditures. Uh, in this case, we'd be looking at uh, specifically utilities and street uh, improvements and uh, also new street development. So that's including um, I guess all the work, or the work that would happen on First Street during 2024 and afterwards, and as well as uh, University Street's development, um, any, um, I guess, stormwater, detention ponds, things like that, um, going into 2026. So we're asking the RDC tonight to um, approve a match, not committing funds as much as approving the match amount that's required by the grant just to, as a reminder this doesn't appropriate funds it doesn't commit funds but it does allow us to submit the application which doesn't lock us into the grant or anything like that but it just does allow us to submit it and um, and that doesn't all necessarily mean that 19 million in match would be TIF money um, but it does this would help us close a pretty big uh, gap in our infrastructure funding around Hopewell if it all you know if we ended up getting 38 million dollars um, we would look at what that means. Could we accept the whole 38 and get 19 and match? But um, this would just be sort of a uh, pre-approval, if you will, for the possible match. So am, am I understanding that this, is, this action just um, allows us to submit the grant? It would have to come back to us. Let's say if we got approved, the grant was approved. It would have to come back to us, and at that point we could say, no, we don't want, we, we don't want to proceed. Yes, uh, because it doesn't, you know, uh, this this doesn't uh, commit us to signing a contract with with the DOT. Um, I believe any money that would come back 
through the grant would go into the project approval form if it had a Hopewell project related to it. And this money would go into that project review and approval form uh, and any match would be associated with it. So it doesn't legally obligate us to spending any money by approving the resolution tonight. This reserves our, our seat at the table. Yeah, it does. And um, for the, the in Deb Coons, um, JS Held, if you look at the details of the Excel sheet that's attached to it, you'll see at the very bottom there's a summary of the different fund types. And what you can see, the way that Jonas is proposing this, which is a smart thing, is he's saying, you know, we've already committed to some things through the project review form that haven't been paid out yet, that maybe we could leverage that and get 50% of it back. So, so in that, and I was just looking through just to remind myself is, you know, we have the opportunity potentially, if they agree with, with us, is that maybe about four million of that money that you've already committed to in the project review form, you could recoup. So that would be a good thing, that reduces that. And then um, if, you, if you take that against what could be the match we would have, that means an additional maybe $4 million is kind of the tentative number. So the, the gap for us that we need to make up is eight, but four of that you've already committed, uh, and that would mean the four. So just to give a sense of what it could be. They don't have to agree with our math, right? They could not uh, agree with some of it and agree with others, and so those numbers could change, which is part of the reason that this is a percentage of commitment rather than an exact dollar amount, because it kind of depends on um, if they award us a partial amount, which I think is possible. Yes, that is so. possible. So my other question is, is, would this grant plus the match get us 50% there, 100% there, 30% there? than funding all of the things that are not funded currently. So the request has been for that this is, the request would be for the remaining infrastructure, funding all the remaining infrastructure at Hopewell. But because it is a 50-50, right, split, um, but because we're counting, <laughs> this is complex, but because we're using some of the existing federal money that we've already been kind of earmarked, that you know that if they agree with that then that could reduce our funding split maybe we can use that and maybe we don't have to pay the full 50 percent maybe ours is somewhere 40 percent but it kind of depends on that interpret final interpretation so the <clears throat> action is written on up to 50 percent because depending on how they agree with our analysis and what we count toward it that may or may that may change but i think it could be as up to 50 percent because there's no cap on this award, we went ahead and submitted the full request. So we'll see where it goes. Why not ask? Okay. Yeah, they, yeah, they could award. Keep quiet. Yeah, you? Oh, Deborah has. Oh, Deborah. Deborah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Request. Um, I'd like to request an amendment to resolution 23-70 that clarifies oh. that the reference is to the oh, US. Oh, US. Okay. That, that, that would be appropriate. This is the US. It is the federal. That'd be in the whereas clause, the first whereas clause, I believe. Right, Deborah? Thanks, Deborah. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. It is a federal, yes. <laughs> okay. With that, this 38 million, the 19 million, if they did award all of it and we're concerned about our cash cap of being able to hit the, the match, mm -hmm. are we able to take a reduced portion based on the grant? Or is it um, all or nothing? I believe we, that would be a matter of uh, negotiations um, after we after are, we um, award. awards are announced. Okay. Um, I don't foresee that it would be a problem for us to ask for a reduced amount, but we would have to justify right. that um, the scope of the project as we presented them wouldn't be reduced. Um, that we would have still fulfilled uh, the obligation to complete all of Hopewell, um, even with a reduced amount that we're accepting from them. Okay. And then what's the total amount of grants that the U.S. Department of Transportation is going to award? Uh, I actually did not write down the number. So the number of grants uh, last year for capital construction projects like this mm -hmm. were, I believe, 12 across the country. Okay. However, this year um, they have increased the amount of uh, the first stream of funds for this particular program, be referred to as RCP. Mm -hmm. Um, which I believe was going up to, I believe, 30, I think 340 million um, for this. And they also added a second stream that they referred to as NAE, uh, which has slightly different 
um, goals and um, requirements for eligibility, uh, which I believe is going up to a billion dollars. So okay. it's really um, increased a number of potential awards this year. Okay. Uh, and for um, this particular grant, we would be applying for both potential streams. So we have a good shot. Yes, <laughs> we do. Thank you. All right, any other questions on resolution 23-70? Any public comment? All right, I'll entertain a motion for resolution 23-70. Um, Sarah Beverly Danson, I motion to approve resolution 23-70 with as amended by Commissioner Meyerson. I'll second that. Thank you, Deb. <laughs> All right, we have a first and a second, and since Deborah is on the screen, I need a, a vote via roll call, please. Brandy Cassidy, yes. Sarah Bowerly Dansman, yes. Deborah Meyerson, yes. Cindy Canarney, yes. All right, next item of business is resolution 23 71, approval of addendum to the project agreement and payment to Public Investment Corporation. Thank you, uh, President Carney. So, got a couple of different um, folks to talk about this tonight. So, I don't think any current RDC members were on the Redevelopment Commission when this resolution was originally passed. Um, it was Resolution 1828 that the RDC approved construction of a road. I'm reading from the resolution construction of a road that would become the relocation of Weimer Road within the Public uh, Investment Corporation's uh, development at 2700 West Tap Road, which is a 24 uh, lot subdivision. Um, and so I think this project uh, sort of um, was a victim of the pandemic. Uh, and so, uh, but it did get done. And the $250,000 that the Redevelopment Commission committed to uh, has never been paid out. Um, and so we basically are dusting off the old resolution, uh, submitting an amendment to it. Uh, I know Ted Ferguson is here uh, answer any questions or to, fill in anything that is needed. Uh, thanks for coming, Mr. Ferguson. And uh, I'll leave it there and see what questions there are. But this does just dust off the old resolution and, and authorize the payment, which I will also say that the, the funds uh, were already accounted for. Uh, so this would just authorize the payment and get it done. Okay. Are there any questions from commissioners on resolution 23-71? So this is just to fulfill a contractual obligation that we already committed ourselves to. That's correct. Okay. Uh, well, let me say, Colleen, do you agree with that? Yes. <laughs> I, I should ask the lawyers before I'm saying <laughs> Just want to make it abundantly clear to everyone that if we were to vote no on this, we would be breaking a contract. Correct. Okay, got it. <laughs> All right. Um, any other questions from commissioners? The only question is all the platting and everything has been done where the trades have been trades have been accomplished and yeah i understand from planning uh and from engineering that things are all buttoned up and we're good everything's done this is just paying something that's already been allocated and contractually allocated that's okay good. thank you all right is there any um yeah. comment from the public no. all right i will entertain a motion for resolution 23-71 Randy Cassidy, I'll make a motion to approve as noted. Resolution 1822. 2371. 2371, thank you. <laughs> and Sarah Bowerly Dansman, I'll second. All right, we have a first and a second. I need a vote via roll call, please. Sarah Bowerly Dansman, yes. Randy Cassidy, yes. Deborah Meyerson, yes. And Cindy Canarney, yes. All right, next item of business is any other open discussion or general business for tonight? Not hearing any? Just remind the commission that we've got a work session tomorrow at 4 o'clock, and that is um, in the McCluskey room. I can pull that up real quick just to yeah, serve as a reminder. So. Yeah. All right, um, I'll need a motion to adjourn. So moved. All right, good night, everyone.